everyone. Thanks for joining today. We'll be working on a painting of the Watchmen. You can paint along if you'd like to. We're going to start out by laying down a background of a nice sky. Now you can make any sky that you'd like. Sometimes your days are going to be sunny and bright and blue. Sometimes they might be a little cloudy or gray. Depends on how you're feeling for the day. I think that my sky is going to be a nice light blue color with some white fluffy clouds. On my palette, I'm mixing a lot of white paint with a little bit of blue. That way we can get a nice sky color. Don't be afraid if it doesn't mix all together. It'll get to know each other on the canvas. We're gonna use some nice big brush strokes so you can see the strokes that we've made and know that we've put in work to create this painting. There can be a variation in color. Oftentimes the sky will look a little darker blue as you look up. As you get closer towards the horizon, it may appear a little lighter. We're going to cover most of the background on the top two thirds of the canvas. Feel free to do less or more of a sky as you like. It's okay to dip your brush in a little bit more water if your paint is not spreading very well. Just going to cover the whole background here with our nice clear blue sky. It can look a little messy at this point. That's okay. I'm going to darken up the top of my canvas so it fades to a little bit darker of a blue. Trying to keep the paint moving so that way we don't get any harsh lines. Just blend it right down the canvas. We'll leave the bottom third empty for now. If you'd like, you can join me in switching to a smaller brush. We're not going to be needing this large wash brush anymore. As we start to lay in the watchman. The rocks around here are a nice rusty red color based on their iron. So on my palette, I have a dark red and a more gold color, as well as a dark brown. We'll be mixing those together with some white and maybe even some purple and blue to give it depth. I'm going to start with some red and mix it with that gold and add in a little bit of brown. I'll be working on the darker side of the watchman because in my painting, it's going to be morning. And the sun hasn't quite hit the whole formation yet. The watchman rock formation looks kind of like a pyramid from the direction that I'm painting it. So I'm going to start with its tall point in the center, most of the way up the canvas and work our way down. Now you'll notice some of the colors mixing together as our background paint is still wet. That's okay, it'll dry as we go. I have a nice general pyramid-like shape. This will just be the background for the whole formation. It's okay if some spots are a little lighter and some spots are a little darker. We've got lots of layers that we can add. Feel free to use a reference picture if you'd like, or you can just work from memory or from your imagination. At this point, I'm starting to cover the whole area that is going to be our cliff face. It's okay if it looks a little streaky or stripy right now. It's kind of what our rocks look like in real life. From time to time, I'll mix in a little bit more brown with my red or a little bit more gold to get that really dark umbery color. And I can start to build some darker shades. Don't worry if it's not perfect, nothing is. As we continue to paint, you might notice that you'll get some streaks of color on the canvas. That's totally fine. They're just working together to help you with our rock texture. All right. Now that I've laid down my foundation for the watchman, I'm going to add in some shadows. 
we want to save the highlights for last so that we can really get those crisp light colors to pop well. I'll mix some blue and maybe even some purple into some more of that red paint that I have. I'll add in a little bit of gold as well. That'll help it become a little bit more brown for us. Sometimes shadows can appear more blue or purple to our eyes, so it's okay if you have those colors remaining. We're just going to find all the little nooks and crannies in the rock face and see where they are deepest, and that's where, we're, where we'll put our darkest shadows. For us, we've got a lot of places that a bat might like to roost in all of the nooks and crannies on the Watchmen. Feel free to add as few or as many as you'd like. It's going to be real shadowy on this side of the rock. As I'm working, I'm generally using an up and down vertical brush stroke. That's because a lot of the cracks and fissures in the rock are vertical. Though you will notice that the rock base is a sedimentary rock, you'll see a lot of more detailed horizontal lines. You can add those in if you'd like, but it's a nice touch to add at the end, where you can retain more of the detailed lines. My shadow kind of sweeps around the corner of the formation as this side is being lit up by the rising sun. This side is still in shadow, but there's a part that juts out over here and is still covered in shadow. We can darken up that paint color even more if we'd like. Adding some brown to it this time. And that really gives it dimension, especially as we get our highlights in. That contrast can create a lot of depth in your painting. Feel free to paint anywhere in your backyard too. There's a lot of interesting things out there to paint, even if they seem a little mundane at first. If you give it a closer look, it can be very interesting. I'm using acrylic paint today, which dries pretty quickly. It gives you the ability to add a lot of layers on top of each other in quick succession. If you use oil paint, it might take a little bit longer for things to dry, but you can blend colors very easily. So it's just up to your preference and whatever you have on hand. Any paint will do. You'll notice that I'm not using any black paint. I find you can get very deep shadows without using black that give it a little bit more vibrancy. Once you add black paint, it can be very hard get a lot of depth out of that color, even though it's black and it makes deep shadows. It's a lot more interesting if you use colored paints for shadows. Just deepening a few extra shadowy areas on the Watchman here. And then we can start to add in our highlights once this dries a little bit more. The farther out you go from the center, the less detailed you have to be because our eyes are going to be on the focal point here. After that, as long as you have the general shapes, that's fine. You can add in some more of that original rusty red color to get more variety on our rock face. So our rocks are more than just one color. And it's okay to mix as you go and create different colors along the way. Nothing has to match perfectly. We're going to add in a little bit more red. That way it's not such a gloomy day on the Watchmen. All right. Lovely. Now we can rinse off our brushes and start on the highlights. Feel free to grab a different brush if you need. 
I may actually take the opportunity now to add in some clouds to my sky. It's looking a little lonely up there. And I'm lucky enough to have a fan brush, which can make very lovely detailed clouds. All you have to do is get it a little bit wet. And it can give you some nice fluffy clouds. Mine are going to be rather wispy. It's not a stormy day here. Just do some wispy cloud shapes, depending on where your clouds are coming from. You could do this before you put in the watchman, your foreground, but it's okay to do it after, too. You'll want to keep adding white to your brush if you'd like to keep that bright white color in the background. It's easy for it to get blended out into wet paint. Just make sure we take some of those wispy clouds to the edges. We fill our entire canvas. If you'd like, if you're having a rough day, you can always add in some big thunderhead clouds. It's up to you. The scenery in the canyon is quite variable. All right. That gave our watchman a little bit more time to dry. So that way, we can use the same brush we were using before to mix some white together with some of that gold color and some of that red to create some more highlights. And again, it's okay if it's a little bit streaky when you apply it. That'll just help with your rock texture. For my painting, it's a beautiful golden morning, so I want to keep that gold color really present. And that way it will contrast nicely with our purpley shadows. I'm going to keep my technique of using those vertical strokes. And if there's something that you don't like, you can always paint over it. I'm going to try and keep my highlights on the lighter side of the rock. We can add a few to the shadowed side. But in general, I want the focus to be on the right-hand side here. All right, from here, I'm going to continue to make this color even lighter and build up those highlights. The hardest part about making a painting is knowing when you're done. For me, once it starts to look a little bit muddy or mucky, you know that's your final step. So we'll add in a little bit more white on the edges, and then we'll probably be just about done with our mountain. We can always go in back and then add more shadows if we'd like some crisper lines. I'm really focusing on the rocks that are jutting out because they catch the sunlight first in the morning. All right. And from here, I may rinse my brush off again and go back into some of our shadows, make them a little bit darker and deeper. go back in with our purplish brownish color. And really find those crevices.
All right, I think we've just about gotten our rock face done. Feel free to make any of the lines more crisp if you'd like. I like more of an impressionist approach, so that's fine with me to stop right there. We'll work our way down to the foreground. This is where you can get a bit more creative. Underneath the Watchman, you do have a few crumbly cliff layers that are a bit more salmon pink in color. And there's trees scattered along them, mostly juniper and pinyon pine. But feel free to add any trees or even the Virgin River if you'd like, whichever setting you'd like to put your mountain in. I'm going to focus on a little bit of those cliffs, and then we'll add in some trees. For these hillsides, the horizontal banding is much more apparent. So I'm going to use a horizontal brush stroke here. I'm mixing together a variety of colors. And we'll just keep dipping the brush back into that. And we want it to look streaky in these layers. So feel free to mix on the canvas. Some of these rock layers are a little bit rusty or red, so it's totally okay to blend that in as well. And again, if you find your paints are a little bit harder to blend, it's absolutely okay to add water. We've got our base just about laid down for those. Just going to finish up a few more spots. And just keep adding paint to my section of light salmonish color. We don't want anything looking too uniform. All right. From here, we can add in everybody's favorite happy little trees all along our hillside. I'm going to grab a glob of our blue paint and then a whole bunch of the yellow paint. Mix that together. Should make a nice foresty green. But if it isn't foresty enough for you, you can always add in a little bit of brown or white or even red. Whatever you feel like it needs. Ours needs a little bit more brown here. You'll notice that it's perfectly okay to be messy. There we go. And we can keep adding and amending as we work. All right, with these trees, they are very far away. So I'm going to take the time to just make little tree-like motions. So just add in some dots along the hillside. From this distance, we can't see the individual trees, which makes it pretty easy for us to just lay them down carefully with some little dabs of the tip of the brush. There are some areas where the trees are a bit more dense and somewhere they're more sparse. We want to make sure to leave plenty of open light color in the background. You can always re-dip your brush in or even change the color as you go to make it a bit more dynamic.
We'll add in a few more sparse trees along our hillside. At this point, I'm going to add some dimension to our hillsides, just with our trees there. Some of it's going to be kicked by the sun, some won't. We'll add a little bit of highlight along the way, if I can get some clean white paint. And apparently some of our trees are getting highlighted too. All right, from here is where you can get very creative with whatever you would like to put in the foreground. I'm going to work on lightening up our green color to add in some leaves of some cottonwood trees that you might see from a viewpoint along the Paris Trail. I'm just adding more gold color to the tree green we've created before. And this is where you can be very free with your brush strokes. You don't need to see individual leaves. You don't need to focus on every single leaf shape along the way. Just get the general feeling of the trees in front. If you wanted to, you could have added a background behind these trees. I'm going to make them dense enough so it'll cover the bottom third of our painting. If you wanted something realistic, you could also put in a shuttle bus or a squirrel or a deer, whatever you feel like today. Don't be afraid if your paint is pretty globby on the canvas. You can give it great texture. And then we'll give some highlights on our treetops where the sun might be touching those leaves. We'll work down to some darker colors as they'll be more in shadow. It's okay if it doesn't look perfect. Whatever trees you create are going to be great trees. All right. Feel free to keep fiddling with your foreground if you need to. But I think we are just about done with our painting here. Add a little bit more dimension to our treetops, and that'll be it. All right.
Now for the big finish, the signature. You can grab a thin brush and sign your name. And there you have it, the Watchman at Zion.